Chapter 2, Act. Acts 2. Acts 2, 42. Amen. Let's read. Let's read together. And with and they continue stead steadfasting in their apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in prayers. The church may be seated. I read the Lord in the last few months has brought us to understand more His Word. The Lord has allowed us to understand uh, understand the doctrine a little better. The doctrine that is not created or changed by man, but the doctrine that is eternal because the gospel is eternal the Lord created all things and he left for us what brings us to the eternity so in the last few months we've had being carried by the Lord we are being brought to deepen in our perfecting of our understanding regarding the doctrine because the doctrine remains the same from the beginning and the mistake of many of many institutions and ministries is to try to change and to add on to something or to uh, try to adapt the doctrine for their own benefits and this is wrong and the Lord has given us this care so that we may not uh, mess with the doctrine because the doctrine is our greatest riches that's when we are aw awoken to seek the Lord and have fellowship with the Lord the first mistake of those that leave is to um, criticize the doctrine. Those that are doing this, they are harvesting terrible consequences to their own lives. So the doctrine was sent by God. And today we're going to speak a little bit about the fellowship. That's what we just read here. We're we spoke about the doctrine, about prayer, persevere, on the breaking of the bread. Why? I'm going to begin by asking a question. What was the greatest inheritance of Jesus that Jesus left for us after his departure? Uh, actually, after his resurrection. Now the people from the, from the back. What was the greatest inheritance that Jesus left for us after his resurrection? Who can answer this from the back? The youth. The salvation? Salvation. What else? The Holy Spirit. The body. What else? The Spirit of Grace. All of it, the Lord led for us as an inheritance. But the greatest legacy that Jesus left for us was, was the fellowship. Fellowship. So why fellowship? What is fellowship? A while ago we answered salvation, body, this and that, but we don't stop to think. What is fellowship? That's right. Fellowship is the element that connects 
man with the Father. A fellowship does that. You want to see an example? Pick up a cell phone, one of the newest, the X, the A version. Parents, get ready because the X version is coming. <laughs> get ready because before Christmas, you have to set some money aside. The children want the new f newest phone. So pick up a cell phone with all the apps and everything modern, modern and take the internet away from it. You do understand? It's the same thing. You have a cell phone, you, but you're not going to be able to do anything with it. You're not going to be able to enter into Google, not, not going to be able to do any research, because you removed what connects your cell phone, you, with what is happening around the world. Com the fellowship does this. Fellowship connects men to eternity. If it were not for the fellowship, if it were not for Jesus having, having been resurrected, our faith would be vain, would be dead. So if it were not for the fellowship, it would make no sense for us to be here. That's why Jesus when he resurrected he sent what did the father send said the father sent the holy spirit he himself said i need to depart because the holy spirit is the one that convinces man that brings man to believe in jesus to believe in the resurrection of jesus and the salvation in jesus and this is uh, it is the holy spirit that brings men to have fellowship. That's why the message preached by the primitive church was this, Jesus resurrected. Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. And what for many was, was a scandal, for many was a defeat. But for the church, it was everything. Because from that point onwards, it began the salvation of man through grace and the church preached this the church proclaimed the church would go out that's why there was persecution because the church had to leave Jerusalem and enter to the cities there on uh, the countries why to proclaim that Jesus was alive the tomb of Jesus is empty <coughs> In the fellowship, it links men to God. If it were not for the fellowship, it would make no sense for us to be here. If it were not for the fellowship, it, make, it would make no sense for us to have the Bible. Because the Bible in itself is a word of life. The Bible is the word of life. It has a great importance because when we, you read the Bible, you take knowledge of s things that you didn't know. When you are reading the Word of Life and the Holy Bible, it operates in you. Uh, there is an effect in you. You begin to know the mysteries of God. You begin to understand that you need to seek the Lord that you need to seek uh, holiness. You begin to have knowledge of a project created by God to remove men from this world and turn men to an eternal being. If you read the Bible, you understand this. So when you preach the word of life and you begin to know about the, all those things and when you add fellowship when you begin to read the word of life in fellowship it becomes the living word it becomes the living word the revealed word so the 
the effect is much greater because the effect of the living award it generates a change in your life you no longer are a person that knows the Bible but you become someone that exercises the Bible and places the teachings of the Lord in your life in a daily life and fellowship does this fellowship generates in you a closeness to God not only a desire to know God but the word of life does this but the living word when it's read in fellowship the Lord operates life in your life and you begin now everything that you uh, find out you want to exercise in your life I, I need to seek holiness yes now the Holy Spirit begins so because for this you need to read the Bible you need to fast you need to go to early dawns that's why you need to pray for this you need to do all those things now you begin <coughs> The Holy Spirit generates this desire and you begin to do this. And the Word now becomes a life in you. And the revelation of God generates in you a fear of the Lord. And now you, be, you get closer to God. And faith now is a faith that generates life. It's not the faith that everybody talks about. It's a faith that comes from God and is, rich, is able to reach your heart into your heart and generate an action in you. Because salvation is this, is the action, right? But holiness is a process. A process makes you leave the action and enter into eternal life. Salvation is an action. We can. And that's what everybody says, right? Is the fourth measure. So when you, when you enter into the process, you leave what is this measure of man, and you enter into God's measure. You leave this atmosphere, human atmosphere, rational, and you enter in fellowship with the Lord, and you begin doing things that you didn't do in the past. That's why the fellowship is for us the greatest gift the greatest present that G Jesus left for us after his resurrection everything that the brethren said here is right the body salvation the Holy Spirit everything is part of the project but the fellowship is very important because when man is without fellowship you forget easily the things of the Lord. When man is without fellowship, he only knows about a project. Like many that come to the service, they watch the service, they receive a blessing. They even cry in the service. Why? Because they heard the word of life. They heard that God loves them. They heard that God has for them and their families something better. It was the first contact. But when the Holy Spirit generates fellowship, the person begins to live this. So that's how important the fellowship is because it, it connects us to God. The key element that connects us to God. And you, we will see uh, examples in the Bible everywhere. Characters in the Bible. One of them is Paul. We can't speak about Paul. Paul, when he was was persecuting the church, Paul was had in his hands a letter, an authorization to imprison the Christians, and he's going to the on the way to Emmaus, and actually no, he was going to Damascus, right? way to Amazon's disciples he was going to Damascus and that he had a great experience with the Lord he heard he saw a great light and a very sh loud voice a light is so shiny 
stronger, stronger than the light of the sun at noon. And he heard a voice that spoke to him. And at that moment, that was the experience that Paul had. And it is interesting that the man that were with him, what happened to those men? Who can tell? They heard a voice, but they didn't see the light. They heard the voice, but they didn't see the light. Because Paul, at that moment, the moment in which Paul saw the light and heard the voice, Paul was in a different measure, different than uh, the those men that were with him. Uh, that happens in the church very often. Uh, you see that some people are uh, have a, a better spiritual life than others. Is this person better? No, but this person open up his heart for something that is greater than others. It happens. Man, in order to have fellowship, he has to leave what is human. He has to leave what is human. Because if he doesn't, then many things come, many questions, many affirmations, many suggestions, uh, mind gets polluted and then comes the spiritual weakening and then the doubt and you stop receiving what the Lord has for you. Paul had his first experience. He saw the light, he heard a voice. Was it uh, only on this? Do you think that that's all that happened? Do you think that Paul never saw the Lord again? No. He had more experiences with the Lord. Because Paul was in a different level. Paul, he entered in fellowship with the Lord. And what he received from the Lord, information, the knowledge of what he, he didn't have, because he was a religious man. Yes. He knew the law of Moses. He preserved and he took care of it. But when he had experience with Jesus, the resurrected Jesus Christ, he began to leave that. And today we see in the letters of Paul the operation of God in his life. What Lord, the Lord left. The knowledge that he was able to have that nobody else did. Because he was in fellowship with the Lord. The disciples in, on the way to Emmaus, we can speak about them, same experience. A few days earlier, they were walking with Jesus, seeing his miracles, listening to the message of Jesus, the operation. And Jesus had said, I'm going to die, right? Don't be surprised. But on the third day, I will resurrect. But they forgot about it. They didn't expect the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They lost the their fellowship with God. So then, when Jesus appeared to them, isn't it true? They didn't recognize that it was Jesus. They began talking. But when Jesus breaks the bread when Jesus entered into their house and breaks the bread what happened? they realized that it was Jesus on the breaking of the bread and breaking of the bread speaks of what? it speaks of fellowship so man will only understand that Jesus is the, s the one who was sent by God man will only understand that Jesus is alive when he enters into a fellowship with God when he sees the body of Christ that was broken for us when he sees everything that is the project of God all the prophecies they are fulfilled in the life of the church in the life of the Christian life of the servant when he is tuned up with God because the commitment of God with is with the faithful, the one who is in fellowship. 
Because when the servant is is not in fellowship with God, he becomes an unfaithful. He denies the Lord. He forgets. He is seeking problems. He let himself go by the trials. He seeks sin. But when he is in fellowship with God, it generates fear. The enemy tempt men, but he is able to overcome his victorious because he doesn't want to deny Jesus. That that happens with fellowship. We'll always have trials. We'll always make mistakes. But when we are in fellowship, the majority of the times we are victorious because the word tells us that we need to run away from the appearance of evil. So when men and women, women, they are in fellowship with the Lord, they try, they, they are always trying to get closer to God, and try to, they're seeking prophecies and spiritual gifts because the Bible says without prophecy the, the, the body corrupts. So when man begins to, uh, to avoid things, he doesn't want to get closer to God. You want to pray for him. He's always, you know, ditching. It is because he he doesn't want to hear the prophecy. He doesn't want to hear what the Lord has for him. And we know that God reveals things. God shows. So when man is ditching, receiving a prayer, it's because he knows. He's on a path that many times has no way back. But when he gives himself to the Lord and seeks fellowship with the Lord, the fellowship makes him want to be in the services, to receive a uh, laying of hands. Why? Because it is with this that the Lord is able to reach men, embrace men. That's how important fellowship is. It's only on the breaking of the bread. Jesus was known there on the break of the bread. And what happened? When it happened, those that were uh, on a path leading away from Jerusalem, what happened? They returned to Jerusalem. Fellowship does this. Fellowship removes them from the way or perdition of judgment of death, and brings men back to want to go back to Jerusalem. Because it is in Jerusalem, the spiritual Jerusalem. What that's where the Lord has a great blessing for us. The project of God is fulfilled when man arrives in Jerusalem, the heavenly Cana. So, uh, fellowship removes man from the crooked path, uh, the path that will lead to death. And now he begins to want to speak about the Lord, to be more present on the services. Fellowship does this, brings men to pray more and to want more to participate in this spiritual environment. And those men went there and they spoke about the Lord. They testified of the power of God. And we could spend the whole afternoon speaking about others Mary, who went there on Jesus' tomb, she wanted to see the body of Jesus Christ and put some uh, spices and perfumes. And she knew Jesus. She wanted to see Jesus' body and maybe bring a little joy to her heart, a little comfort and consolation for seeing a great friend, Jesus Christ, his body. But when she arrived there, Jesus was no longer there. Jesus was alive. And she has a conversation there with the one who took care of the cemetery. But Jesus was no longer there. And then he calls her by the name. He appears and says, Mary. Because when God, when God sets men aside, when God identifies men, He calls men by their name. And salvation does this to men. He is an individual. He says, now you come, have a project for your life. Hey, my brethren, 
That's why the fellowship is the greatest legacy of Jesus Christ. And this legacy nobody can take away from us. Nobody. You may cancel it in your life, but this legacy remains. It's not like all the legacies of other people that they live and all that come and cancel and, and rob it. But no, this one, this one is eternal. And the church needs to leave this moment. That's why we are here on those days speaking a lot about this because the fellowship is on the time of the near is very important. The same way that the fellowship in the primitive church was necessary on the breaking of bread, the bread and together praying, everything was given and fellowship, the, the livelihoods it's just one because they need to be in fellowship in order to uh, proclaim that Jesus was alive and today the church needs to be in fellowship you need to be in fellowship you need to fight in order to remain in fellowship so that on the time of the near Jesus may come and not leave you behind because the fellowship that connects you to God but if Jesus comes and you are you have no fellowship, you have away from the body of this that is eternal, your faith w would have been in vain. Everything that you have done would have been in vain. Isn't it true? That's why it's so important in those days that the Church of the Lord fights for fellowship. Amen. Amen. Let's sing a song. So here's a, a word of, from the Lord to our lives, because we need we need to uh, go away from what is human knowledge. We want to allow the salvation thought of God change our lives, our way of thinking. We need to leave it behind. We cannot simply be coming to the church carry a Bible under our arms and carry the ark. We are not, have not been called to be carriers of the ark. We have been called to be preachers of the gospel and give testimony of this gospel, which is the eternal gospel. It's the one that speaks to man, that brings man to know, to want to be in the presence of God. May God bless us. Is it over? Ready? That was a quick one. <laughs> oh, we need to sing another one. Let's put him in, in a tight spot here. When I need a longer song, you sing a, a short one. The children are coming down.
stand up. Let us have a word of adoration to the Lord. Thank you for this word this morning, Lord. We thank you for being your presence, Lord. Lord, we glorify you because we have this opportunity to be called your servants, Lord. Glorify to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The children are going to sing a song. Let's hear the children. God. Amen. Let's pray for the children. Intermediary and the last sense. One of the deacons may pray. Lord, we pray to you for the power of the blood of Jesus as we place in your presence the children intermediary. Uh, the lessons, Lord, pick them up in your hands, Lord. 
my children, my church, may peace be with you. I know that this world and the enemy of our souls is trying to attract them. But I tell you that your prayers, the teachings, the meditation of my word, your vigilance is determined that they may be free from this world. And I'm, I'm preserving them on the rock so they may serve me with joy. Don't be deceived. You are here in my presence, here in my word. The word is that is life. It brings life. I guarantee that they will remain with their souls guaranteed for eternity. Glorify my name, my children. Glorify my name because you have uh, crystal water so that you can bathe and refresh, bring refresh into your souls and quench your thirst. You have green pastures so we can satisfy your spiritual hunger. You have a place where you can lay your head. And it's in my presence that you receive every day the comfort, the renewal, and the strengthening in order to continue walking towards the celestial canna. Glorify my name. Shout hallelujah because your God has preserved you and preserved your children, intermediary and adolescents. Your youth, your elders, I am your God. One. Lord, we pray so that they may grow in your presence with the knowledge of your things. In the name of Jesus, amen.
That's the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. All the honor and the glory be given to you. Hallelujah. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. receive of fellowship of service and our adoration to you and that you may turn into blessings to your whole church and those that were not able to be here that you may be able to reach them Lord and that you may be curing the sick reproaching any sickness giving them physical health and spiritual health so that we may always have the means to be in your presence this is our prayer because you are our God you are the Lord of Lords the doctor of doctors God Emmanuel and we praise you Lord this is our prayer in the name of Jesus in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God and our, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us, now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down. Yesterday, we have received the information about the subscription to this seminar that we are going to have here on the day 15, 16, and 17 of December. So probably tonight we're going to put on the board so the brand can already get prepared so that you may be there with us. It's a great blessing. It's not going to be on the same place that was on the same and uh, uh, that we had last year, but it's going to be in a different place, close to that place. But I heard that it's even better. Don't criticize me. Amen. I uh, want to ask the brethren to continue to pray also because we are looking for a place, we are negotiating with the, this place. If it is God's will, the Lord open the door. If that's the place that the Lord has for us and all the difficulties may be removed and that we may uh, acquire this new place. We had uh, them. We, ha uh, we have a new place in Port St. Louis. It's a, a place that is fixed with services. So 
I ask you that you may bless the services there, that there may be salvation. There's a group that uh, has always been here with us, so that the Lord may use them there as well. And tomorrow night, a work uh, meeting with the ushers and deacons tomorrow, and the men at 8 o'clock p.m. tomorrow. So the seminar, if seek the leader of your group and give your name already. And later on, we take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. But pray so that there may be no, nothing preventing you from uh, going there. And now we're beginning 24-hour prayer for the month of dedication. We need to start getting the names because if it ends up at the last day, we're going so you need, you need to have mentioned that we just mentioned that we are going to have a 24-hour prayer. This week is a week of prayers at noon. It's a month of, of dedication, the month in which the Lord has given us this great gift when His kingdom has been able to reach our souls. Amen. Oh, there is a meeting with Group C, also Group A. I don't know where, but we're going to. <laughs> That's all right. You have the ceiling there. Amen. My brother, this word about fellowship. I left the, the tip to you. For the first question the pastor asked is, what is the greatest legacy of Jesus? If they ask in the seminar, the Church of Pompano said it was fellowship, right? Amen. Peace of the Lord.